All right, so what we will do together right now, and then you'll get used to doing it on your own, is we need to set ourselves up. We won't need to do anything on instruction number one. We've got Java and we've got Ant, so we skip number one in this room. Number two, we skip the first part, which is setting up Android Studio, but then we do have to work on the part that says set up a virtual device. We do have to do that one. Now, again, however, if you're going to use your own real device, you can skip this part. But it might be useful to set up a virtual device anyway, because sometimes it loads faster than your real device. You won't know until you try it. So we'll do this part together again. Set up an Android virtual device. So all the instructions are here, of course, but the very first step is let's go over to the computer window so we can go to the C drive. Open your C drive on your computer. We have a folder called Android SDK. Open that Android SDK folder. And then what's next within this screen? In the SDK folder, what's our next step? Well, we're creating a virtual device, so we need the Android Virtual Device Manager, the AVD Manager. Double-click the AVD Manager. We don't have any devices because, remember, they got erased. They got erased from the last time that we were here. So we'll go over to the device definition tab. At the top, we've got these templates, so to speak. And we have plenty to work with, but we're just going to work with the basic low quality one. Scroll down to 3.2 inch QVGA ADP2 generic. That's the device we'll use. So click on it once to select it. From the right side, we'll select Create AVD. Basically, we're using that template to create a new device. As per my instructions, well, we can change the, the device name if we want. I'm going to leave it. Device template, leave that. Target. Well, we need to change that over to the Google APIs the Google version of the code, and I'm sure there are subtle differences and technical differences. What's the difference between the Google code and the Android code? I'm sure there's a difference, but we won't really have to worry about that. So we select the Google APIs, the Google code, level 22. That will then allow us to select the CPU, the CPU that runs this virtual device. We were not able to select that until we selected also the Google API. So that should automatically go to Google API Intel Atom. So it's going to be an Intel version of the CPU that's in our computers. Keyboard, leave that turn on because we want to be able to type on the keyboard. Skin, lots of options, but which one do we choose under the skin? Skin with dynamic, skin with dynamic hardware controls, the first one. That simply means it'll allow us to see the power button and the volume button and those things like on a real device, but on, on screen. This particular old school device does not have a front-facing camera, so we can't do anything there. But we can use a back camera. If you've got your own laptop, this is very cool because your laptop probably has a webcam. Therefore, you can select webcam and your virtual device will access your real cam on your device. But we will use pretty much probably emulated because our computers don't have webcams. So we'll, we'll use an emulated one. No change to the memory. No change to internal storage. But we do need to pop in an SD card. Doesn't matter the size really, but my hand is usually on the keyboard. 99 is easy to type. Any value really. I think you need at least 5 megabytes. But uh, I'm just going to put in 99 megabytes. We won't do anything with this emulation options, but that's a good segue. How many of you tried to do any of the stuff we learned on Tuesday at home? Raise your hand. All right, very good. If you tried to do it at home, how many of you had a good experience? How many of you had not such a good experience? How many of you had a terrible experience? 
Okay, so you should try it at home if you're able to. Uh, sometimes it, it works right out of the box. When I talk about it in this room, it seems to always work, especially when I do it. But then when you try it at home, it, something goes wrong. So hopefully you were able to figure out what went wrong. If not, bring your computer. During the lab time, you can figure it out, hopefully. And um, it's really great when it works. Um, so we'll just click OK. It's going to think about that and then um, give you results that say we have a new device. If it says not responding, just give it a moment. Eventually we get the results. This is everything that we did. Click OK. Alright, so now we've got a device. We've got a virtual device. We need to now start it. We need to boot it up so we can actually use it. Click Start. I didn't. Uh, I skipped this part last time. I didn't talk about it. I'll mention it briefly. But here, it's about to create a device on our on our computer, and I can select Scale Display to Real Size. So that's going to try as best as possible to actually put a three and a three point two inch screen right on your monitor. And that's actually not too useful because real dimensions and such in the digital world don't really translate. So if you turn that on, you're going to see a much smaller screen than you thought. Really a screen that looks pretty much like the real device here. And that's not so good for, uh, for testing it and such. So I usually never turn that on, but you can play with that at some point. Actually display it as a real dimensions, three inches. If we were, if we had launched, if we still had the device from Tuesday, and we wanted to boot it up again, but like it right out of the, the box with factory settings, we can activate wipe user data. But we're starting with a brand new device anyway, so there's no reason to wipe that data. There's nothing on the device yet. And then here we have the option um, to create, uh, to save, or launch snapshots if we were using snapshots, which really we won't. So that's what this screen is about. We don't do anything here really. Just click Launch. It's going to give you some feedback that it's starting. We will let it start. Go on. Where did the sign-in sheet end up? Okay. Let's see. So this is what we need to do every time we come in here. Especially if you don't have a real Android device to work with, you need to set this up just like we did today, just like we did Tuesday, just like my instructions say. So today we did it together, next time we won't. Next time you do it, because we've done it twice already, and all the instructions are here. So obviously if you're at home and I'm not around to help you, you need to do it at home. And if you try to do it here and make mistakes, great. I'll answer your questions. So the more you do this, the better you get at it. So let that device start up. That's the end of sheet number two, which I'm going to close. Once that uh, device is starting up, you can close your AVD manager. We're done using it. It'll free up a little bit of resources, of, of RAM and such. So I'm going to close the device manager, but obviously keep the device open. Uh, you can also close, if you'd like, to the window uh, where we have the SDK, the Android SDK folder. You can close that if you'd like. While this is starting up, then, um, the next instruction is number three. We don't need to do anything on 2B. We don't need to do anything on instruction 2B because that's the one that focuses on the uh, Android Studio software, which we're not really going to use. So skip over to number three. We've obviously already got Node set up. We've got Cordova. 
set up and install, we need to use Cordova. This is almost done here. And I'm going to start on instruction three, section setup Cordova. So I, I like to get the virtual device started up and I close this welcome screen so I just click OK. And then I also like to click once on the apps icon to load up the apps because there's another sort of welcome screen there that gets in my way. Click OK. Once I've got the device running I'm gonna leave it running. I'm never gonna close it. I'm just gonna have it hanging around like that so that I can actually use it. So did everyone get a virtual device running? Anyone need a little help? Question? Do you need a little help catching up? Do you need a little help catching up? Yeah, we're All right, so this is, uh, this is where we're at. We've got this virtual device. Um, and in order for us to see if, we're, if everything's on track, we're going to then do the next uh, steps here on number three. Uh, we're going to use the, the node command prompt. Uh, we can skip number two. Cordova's already installed. But then we'll basically start on number four. We're going to create a, another quick test app and then run it in the device. So that means we'll go to the Start menu, start here, and then search Node, N-O-D-E, and you should get the result Node Command Prompt. So launch Node Command Prompt. Um, I think on instruction number five, I have a, a cheat sheet of some of the commands here. Um, you should have also written them down, and I'll mention them again. But here we're in the we're in your in your user. Yours is lab. Mine is instructor. I want to change into the desktop directory. How do I change in, change between directories again? CD. CD. So CD space the name of the directory, which is desktop. The name of the folder. Capitalization doesn't matter really in our case, but I'll just uh, type it as it's supposed to be. CD space desktop, and then now I'm on the desktop. What's that command to clear the screen so that I can start from a fresh new screen? CLS. CLS. You can do that if you'd like, but I'm going to clear the screen. Okay, so I've got my top command here, command line. And I'm just going to do what my instructions say, starting with number uh, number four. Uh, okay, I'm on the desktop, and then I'm going to create a new a new Cordova project. 
So we've got Cordova, space, create, and then some options. So we'll type Cordova, space, create, space. The name of the folder of this project, which in our case we can just call it test02. Test1, we did it back on the Android Studio. Uh, this doesn't quite matter at the moment. So test2, space, we need to give it the unique identifier, which is based on a website. How many of you uh, currently actually do have a website at the moment? .com, .net, whatever. You can use that if you'd like or make one up. But in this class, we're just going to go very easily. Com dot your last name dot the name of the project folder, which is <laughs> test02. So that's the meaning of that. It's a backwards, it's a reverse order domain name. It's a unique identifier because there may be another calculator app on the App Store. They may, there may be another um, test app in the App Store. There may be apps that exist that are already called test, but there's only one in the world that is called com.jones.test. And that is what keeps it unique from every other app in the App Store. Space. The final parameter here is the, is the text that appears below the icon. We can use capital letters and such here, but it's best to wrap some quotation marks around this. So quote, end quote, and then press back on the arrows to go back. And we'll, we can type test02. Capital T, space. Um, so my icon on my device is going to be called test02. Internally, it's known as com.jones.test02. And it exists in the folder test02. Press enter. Nothing happens till you press enter. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the test zero two in the double quotes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry. Well, where do we see that? Because the the, the, the lowercase test zero two is what we see on our desktop, right? The test zero two is the name of the folder on the desktop. Yes, and the test zero two is the text that appears below the icon of your app. So I got the feedback, creating a new Cordova project, although it technically doesn't say, you know, you've created it. If there was an error, it would give you an error. But Okay, so we created it. Next instruction, it says, we need to be inside of the folder of our project for any other future Cordova command to work. We're outside of the project folder when we create the project, but we need to always be inside of the project folder for any of these Cordova commands to, to make sense. So we do cd test02 so that we can change directory into that directory cd space test02 enter so now I'm in the test2 project I want to add Cordova now uh, Cordova platform add and the one we're going to be working with most of the time is Android so we're adding Android we can actually chain this. We can, we, at this moment, we can tell it to add more than one platform. So if we also wanted to add another platform, we just add a space and another platform. We're going to uh, also use this other platform that is really helpful for us for uh, debugging, and that platform is called Browser. Question. Back up to create the you can't. You have to type it again. Oh, actually, if you press up on the keyboard, it'll bring it back. And then you can back up. Okay, I'll check yours in just one moment. Cordova platform add Android, and at the same time, we're also adding another platform called Browser. This will allow us to quickly test our projects in a web browser, specifically Android's web browser, or Google's web browser, which is Google... Chrome? You might have heard of it. So we'll be able to test our projects in Google Chrome. So press enter, let that process, and then it's going to add the code for Android and the code for the browser. Okay, so then the very last thing I did is the line at the very top, or the second line. Sorry, the third line. Cordova platform add and the browser. Okay. 
We're doing something a little extra. And so it's a maybe a type of two minutes for here. Does anyone else need the sign in sheet? Okay, so the point of what we did here uh, was we added the Android platform and the browser platform. If you have a keen eye, you'll see that in my instructions I did not mention in the instruction tab browser. So I'm just showing that we can chain more than one platform, more than one command oftentimes. Here I said go to the platform at Android, but we also added browser. If we, if we didn't do it this way, we could have also done it later on with Cordova platform add browser. That's equivalent. Um, whereas up here I wrote Android and then browser. That's the same as if I had then simply done Android add platform of Android and then Cordova platform add browser. Both of those commands are the same. So I get some feedback here creating Cordova project. So if you're not used to the command prompt, it seems like just a bunch of gibberish. However, you should take a moment to look at it, and if it doesn't make sense, but just look at it and see, maybe things will pop out that kind of make sense, and it'll make more sense as we do it. So simply don't take its word for it that it worked. Look at what the result happened. So here I look at adding Android project, creating project for the Android platform, some stuff, copying template, etc fetching, etc., adding browser project, creating browser project, installing whitelist. Okay, so it seemed to be it seemed to work. If it didn't work, it would definitely give you an error message. Well, I want to see this basic project. I, I know I've got step seven, we'll do that in a moment. But I want to I want to see the project in the web browser eventually, so we'll skip a little bit. Number seven and eight. We'll get back to those plugins in a moment. Going to 9, Cordova build to prepare the project. This is what's going to then take all of that code and package it for the appropriate platform. Doing Cordova build will automatically create the version for Android and the version for the browser. I could have also specifically said Cordova build Android, and then it would only build the project for Android. Or Cordova build browser, and it would only put the project together for the, for the browser. Cordova build will do both. So let's do that one. Cordova build and enter. The first time is usually a little slow because it just has to 
dot all the I's and cross all the T's and crunch all the graphics. And then after this, it'll be, it'll be faster. But the point of this is that I'm preparing the project so I can do the final step eventually, number 10, Cordova Emulate Android. I want to see this in the emulator that I've got there hanging out. I'll just wait a moment. Notice how some of these say up to date. Again, it's going to zoom by, but as you look at it more, you'll, it'll make sense. Some of these files are up to date, and most of them are not, because this is the first time we do build. After this time, many of the files are ready, so then on, sub on subsequent times, this will proceed much faster. And at the very end, it says build successful. It took me 27. 0.45 seconds. Did anyone get a shorter time than me? Raise your hand. What uh, what time did you get back there? 24. 24. Did anyone get longer than this one? Yeah, 30. 30. Mm -hmm. So it's going to vary. Even though all our computers are supposedly the same, some might be slower, some might be faster. And then it says, okay, it built the following APKs. If you if you dig down, you'll see something that says Android Debug APK. And um, browser package is over here, uh, package zip. So, okay, it did it. I built a project, now I want to run the project. Cordova emulate Android. What that should do is then it'll get things ready. It will uh, get my, see how all of those say up to date now. It'll get my project ready, it'll see my virtual device, hopefully, and then it'll pop up my project, Apache Cordova. This time it said it, it, it built it again, and it only took 3.2 seconds. And then it's saying, okay, it built it, installing app on emulator, using this APK, using this, this software, launching the application, launch success. So do take a look at that stuff. It, if you're not used to it, it looks like just a bunch of gibberish. But look at it because it does give you feedback, especially if there's an error. And so I got my Apache Cordova running on my emulator. Raise your hand if it worked. All right, anyone need a little help for this? Try this. Back on the command prompt. Now try Cordova run browser. See what happens then? If you get a pop-up, just click over it. So I got uh, my Apache Cordova template project loaded in my device. And I had said, well, try to see what happens with Cordova run browser. OK, if you've got this, uh, this pop up here, just click OK. And then what should happen is your Google Chrome web browser loads up and then you might get a unsupported thing right there. You might get other pop-ups that come up and then eventually hopefully Apache Cordova is ready. So this is a version of our app in the web browser. A few of you said you got an error?
even if the browser is Oh, um, I, I did not get it. Oh, I had a little box that I didn't have to open. You mean the and the Okay, so the point of this is we have a couple of ways to test our project. Uh, we have tested in the virtual device, tested in the web browser, and then in a moment we'll talk about testing it on a real device. So lots of ways to test the project. Uh, sometimes one of the fastest ways to do it is here in the browser, but I've noticed with the latest version of, uh, that we have of, of Cordova, there's a little quirk here. Um, so I've loaded it up, it's in the browser, um, I'm just going to close the browser now. So close Google Chrome. I'm going to leave the I'm going to leave the um, virtual device running. I close the browser, and it should take me back on my command prompt, ready to accept the command again. Um, we have uh, several shortcuts that we can do in in the command prompt. One of them is to bring back my last command. I don't want to retype it again. I don't want to type Cordova run browser again, even though it's not too much to type, but I, I want to bring it back quickly. There's a shortcut that on the keyboard, if you press the up arrow, it'll bring back your last command. So if you're on your command prompt and you press up, it brings back your last command. If you press up again, it brings back your second to last command. Keep pressing up to bring back your whole history of commands press down, then it takes you forward in your history of commands. So simply press up to, to bring back Cordova Run Browser again. If you, if you overshot it and you're at something else, just press back down. Anyway, bring back your Cordova Run Browser command and run it again. Press Enter to show you this quirk. Well, this uh, directory is one of them, but just you're always just going to click okay on that. The quirk is, while this browser is running here, we can't type anything on the, on the prompt. It's waiting for this to be done before we can issue the next command. One way to do it is to close the browser, but another way to do it is, let's say we want to we want to cancel the usage of the browser. Sometimes we might want to cancel this whole build process. Let's say, oops, I forgot something. Let me cancel that. We can cancel commands um, on the keyboard by pressing Control c Control c often we know it as copy, right? But in the command prompt, it's cancel. So I press Control c on the command prompt, and it says terminate batch job? Yes or no? Yes. Enter. So then it brings me back my command prompt. So if I'm doing Cordova build, and I make a mistake, I can control cancel that, control C that. If I want to close the web browser quickly, I can also control C to cancel. Or I should be able to close the web browser itself and then also bring back my command prompt, uh, my command prompt ability. Okay. On my instructions, if we look at 7 and 8, the ones that I skipped, we've got Cordova, type Cordova plugin, add Cordova, and I'm say here, type all of this. But you can copy and paste. We won't do this just yet, but what this does is it adds extra plugins, extra features to our app. Right now our project cannot access some of the features of the device. A feature such as the camera, the GPS, the contacts, 
um, the SD card of the device. We can, we can get access to all of those features, though, via plugins. So we, we could do, for example, Cordova plugin add Cordova dash plugin device. And that gives me extra device features. Then I could, and then after pressing enter, then I can type again Cordova plugin add Cordova plugin contacts to access the contacts of the device. Then I could also do Cordova plugin add Cordova plugin in app browser. Well, remember I said that we can chain commands together. So notice this long command Cordova plugin add Cordova plugin device, Cordova plugin network, Cordova information, Cordova orientation, Cordova dialog. They're all just chained together, so you don't have to type it every single time. All of these are put together in one command. And I said we can copy and paste, but not from this PDF apparently. I have for you in the network folder that command typed all out for you in the network folder. Let's go to classroom data. Let's go to Campus Android 2. And I've got here a file you should drag to your desktop, Cordova Plugins. Drag Cordova Plugins to your desktop. Open Cordova Plugins. And in there is the whole command that you don't have to type yourself. What you have to do is right click, select all right-click copy back on command prompt right-click paste it does not work to control V if you're used to copying and pasting on regular software control C is to copy control V is to paste this is not regular software this is a command prompt so you do want to do right-click paste you can close the browser, you can close the browser sure and then enter. <coughs> so that's going to take a moment and it's going to download all of these extra plugins, all of these features to make our app more full featured. <coughs> yes? Where is it downloading it from? It's downloading it from npmjs.org. It's the Node Package Manager. Um, developers upload software to this package manager and then we can access it and download it into our projects. So it's coming straight from the internet. So we would need an internet connection for this to work. Okay, so it gave me a lot of feedback, and I guess it worked. My instructions say to confirm this, number nine, uh, number eight, type Cordova, Cordova plugin to confirm 19 plugins, just to see what it says. So after we copied and pasted that command, it seemed to have done a bunch of stuff. I can see something about installing here and installing there, but just simply then type Cordova platform. I'm sorry, Cordova plugin. Put over plugin, and that'll give you a list. These are all the plugins we have. These are all the features our app can access. It can access the battery status, for example. So when you come down to like 10% battery, your app can tell you, hey, don't forget to save your work. We have um, globalization, so we can make our, our app multilingual. We have uh, de device motion, 
so we can deal with orientation and motion and accelerometer and such and camera and vibration we can make our app we can make the device vibrate with a with a command all of these are the different features that every device has basically and we'll be able to access them all through code via JavaScript so something we've already gotten some experience with JavaScript we'll be able to access these features question yes about the changing the language Mm -hmm. Is that accurate, the language when it's translated, or is it like a jumbled mess of...? It's a starting point for you to translate the language. It's not that it will automatically take all your words and translate them to different languages. It'll create the ability for people to click to switch languages, but mm -hmm. us as the developers still have to provide the appropriate okay. words. And so to finish instruction three, uh, what I would do is Cordova build again, because we just added a bunch of new code to our project. It's not the, up the, it's not the most updated version of our project. So I would do Cordova build. It should probably process a little faster than before. It took me 27 seconds previously. But now because a lot of the, a lot of the, um, components of this app have already been processed see all those up-to-dates there we it needs to process a few new ones 13 seconds so now our app is the most updated up-to-date one thing that we need to get used to let's say we made some visible changes to our project let's say we made it say something else besides Apache Cordova we would need to do Cordova emulate Android every time to see the result. This does not add a, this is not this is not dynamic in that if you make any changes to your app, it does not automatically reflect in the device. So that still is like an older version, a version before I added the plugins. So usually my workflow is on my device, uh, real or virtual. I usually hit the home button to take me back to the home screen and then I do Cordova emulate Android so that it, I know that it's loading the most latest version of it onto my screen. Let's do Cordova emulate Android. That will then take my built app, load it on the device here, it's the latest version of it. We're not really going to see anything different, but it is the latest version of the app. Any questions so far? This is a this is some recap from last time. This is not really new. We we did it last time, except for browser. Um, to complete instruction number two, what's the very last step here? Next steps. Cordova.apache.org. Let's, uh, let's visit that website. Uh, click, I think you can just click on that. Yeah, click on that link. But you're going to memorize. This is your homework. You're going to memorize. Cordova.apache.org. You're going to memorize that. Because that's where the manual is at the manual for Cordova. Remember, Cordova is our framework that will allow us to create any mobile uh, project based on our HTML. It's like the blanket that wraps around all of our project code from last month. And the whole manual is here. Native mobile apps with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript target multiple platforms with one code base, free and open source. So we're building this project in HTML, CSS and JavaScript. That's our code base. And then we can publish that to all the platforms, Android, iPhone, Windows, Blackberry, etc. Reusable code supports offline scenarios, access native device APIs. That's that whole plugin thing we just did. Give me access to the camera, give me access to the contacts, etc. 
how to use it? Well, it's already installed on our systems, but it's telling you you need to use Node.js, npm install Cordova. We did, we, it's done for us here. Create a project. Cordova create my app. That's what we did. But we did it a little bit more detailed in that we created the complete package and such. And then Cordova platform add. Here they're saying add the browser. We added Android. So quick instructions. Cordova run browser. If you back up to the top, click documentation, which is also a link at the top. Click documentation. And so here is the whole manual, chapter by chapter. Different languages, different versions. We've got, I, I believe we've got Android or Cordova 5.1 or something on these computers. The latest, most cutting edge one is, and is Cordova 5.3.3. But um, it's not it's not listed here yet. And notice you can go back and, and look at the code from different versions. Um, usually you want to use the latest one because it's the most feature rich, the, it's the most um, optimized, it's got the most options and such um, security features. But what always comes up in our classes, we're here for three months, what always happens is new versions of all of this software gets released. Over the summer, it happened when I taught the class. Uh, it happened here, actually, because they released a brand new Android 6. So this stuff changes. And people ask me, well, should I update my software? Short answer is yes. Uh, long answer is no. Because if I'm in the middle of a project, I'm not going to update my software. I don't know what things will break when I download the latest and the greatest. I don't know how my code will now need to be retyped with the latest and the greatest. My advice is that when you're working on a particular project, don't update your code until your project is done. Because you don't want to have to suddenly relearn what's new before you can continue your project. After you're done with it and released version 1, then update your code, read the documentation, and see, oh, now I've got to add this content security policy that I didn't need to from my original code. Okay, I'm going to learn this, update my software, release version 2.0. Or basically stick with what works while you're working on a project. So there's a lot of reading here that you can do on your own, but it tells you what this project is. Cordova is a cross-platform uh, development tool. It became part of the official Apache uh, Open Source Foundation in 2012. Uh, how does it work? We'll look at something called config XML. Uh, basically, if you were using Cordova in the old days, uh, you could... Um, you had like an installation file and such, but then they moved over to the command prompt starting with version 3. So a lot of us then suddenly had to dust off the cobwebs of the command prompt, but you'll see that it's a pretty f quick workflow once you remember these commands. Cordova create, Cordova build, Cordova platform add. Uh, let's take a quick look on the left side to platform support. This just shows you how cross-platform it is. What can you do? You can access the accelerometer of Android devices. It's basically one line of code lets you access the accelerometer of all the devices. You don't have to learn the specific command in, uh, in uh, Android and then the different specific command in iPhone. You just use the one master command, which we'll learn, of course, battery status, camera capture, so pretty much they all work except for you know right here like Firefox OS it has some holes, capture doesn't work, compass doesn't work let's say we wanted to learn, well how does camera actually work? notice it's a clickable link let's click on the camera feature that takes us over to 
the plugin uh, the plugin uh, instruction screen. These are plugins. These are extra features. That's what Cordova plugin add did. It added the camera feature. When this loads up, it'll tell us, okay, how do we actually use it? This plugin defines a global navigator.camera object, which provides an APA for taking pictures and for choosing images from the system's image library. So here's an example. Uh, Navigator.camera. That looks familiar. That's JavaScript. How to use it? Cordova, or how to install it? Cordova plugin add Cordova dash plugin dash camera. We did that already. I wrote it all down for you in one handy long command. So we have the ability to take photos with our basic app. Um, what it can actually do, uh, if you keep scrolling, navigator.camera.getPicture. This is in the syntax of JavaScript. Remember we had console.log, for example. We had, um, what else, uh, navigator.getPosition, uh, I think, for GPS and such. So navigator.camera.getPicture. And uh, this is all in, J in JavaScript notation. There could be a successful capture, a camera error, and you can have options. So it's all explained. What does this mean? How does it work? It's going to give you all of the technical details and examples. So when we get to it, we will copy and paste these, change them to our needs. But basically, you, you Basically, you copy and paste this into your code, and now you can take a photo. That's it, basically. It's not fully complete code, actually. But uh, how about, well, I want to load a picture, actually, from the memory card. Here's the example. If you look at the code, it's very similar, but something says um, data URL, the data of the photo, whereas this one says file URI the file location. So we'll look at this in depth. We'll actually work with plugins. I'm just showing you that, well, how do you know what to do? It's all in the manual. It's all at cordova.apache.org. We can set options about the quality of our photo, um, how large to capture the photo at, and it explains everything with possible options. Save it as a JPEG, save it as a ping. So it's all here, and particular quirks. When we're dealing with, a with Android devices, what quirks we have. When we're dealing with iPhone devices, what quirks we have. So I'm going to back up, back to the Cordova site. Um, This is, uh, we're going to spend a lot of time looking through these different um, sections. What's this config file? How do I add icons to my project? How do I develop my own plugins if I want to? On the left side, uh, click on Plugins API. This is just another way to look at it. I usually go this way. I go to the plugin screen, and then here it'll tell me, okay, dialogues, visual device notifications. So I want to make a pop-up happen, a more complex pop-up than the one I've used before. I want to access accelerometers, so you can click there, and that'll take you back to the NPM website, and it'll tell you what the code is, how it works, how to use it, examples, and that's how we're going to upgrade our humble web app that we built last month to make it a more full-featured, native-style app, like uh, to take a photo, to, to make the next great, uh, to, to build the next great American selfie app, if you'd like. We have the ability with the proper plugin, and what we did was we, we installed them all, all the features. We can install only the ones we want, and actually that's best practices. So let's say I built an app that is a, is a note-taking app. But I added to it the ability to take 
photos. Well, that app might not need that, so we don't need that plugin because these plugins take up space. They take up resources. We've added all the plugins. We, we're not going to need all the plugins. If you wanted to remove a plugin, which we'll do later, reading the manual, I would learn, oh, I can type Cordova, plugin, remove, Cordova, don't type this, Cordova.plugin, camera. And that would basically remove the camera feature. So on our previous command, we added them all. We can remove features as well. Let's take our first break, and when we come back, we've got this virtual device, we've got this template project. I don't know how it fully works yet, but at least let's see if we can get this now to work on our real devices. I'm going to turn the printer back on. If you don't have instruction number four, you can print it at 7.05. We'll be back at 7.15, and then we'll try to set up these devices.